You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. Ah, diversity. Something that sounds fine on paper and when done with genuine good intentions is great, but when it became about promotion, virtue signalling, and apparently the only thing that makes a movie good, I knew we were entering a dark period of cinema. We're living through another repressive time uh -huh. when it comes to cinema. But now audiences have finally caught on and they're holding companies like Disney and Marvel Studios to account, saying yes, be diverse, but make sure the damn movie is also good. Because audiences are now realizing that diversity isn't what makes a movie good or bad, it's just simply diverse. What makes the movie good is if people like the character, if they honored the source material, if they crafted a good story and gave good performances. People now understand that it's those basic filmmaking elements that make or break a story and it has nothing to do with diversity despite what these studios try and push in their marketing schemes. But now that audiences have realized this and Disney Marvel now know that they can't keep doing the same marketing trick, they are finally making some changes. Because in a recent report it's been released that Marvel have fired 15 employees, some of which being producers that were involved in some of these terrible films. And not only have they fired these producers, but we were also told a few weeks ago that they had cut multiple projects, which they didn't name, but through reported leaks we were able to piece together that these films were none other than the leaders of Marvel's diversity push, with movies like the Eternal sequel being cancelled as well as the Marvel sequel, and apparently now Shang-Chi as well. However, I must say that that is still in the air, and we don't know how accurate those reports are, because we're getting multiple reports conflicting each other, so we don't really know where they're going with Shang-Chi too, but what we do know now for sure is that they fired 50 employees and have also cancelled the Eternals and the Marvels. And now here's the thing, I'm genuinely sad that diverse projects that had a lot of potential were absolutely ruined, because while some wackos will say that anything with a black guy or a woman is quote unquote woke trash, the reality is that diversity doesn't make or break a movie, it all comes down to the quality, and that's why we we were able to get a great movie in the first Black Panther, a great movie in Avengers Endgame, yet on the flip side get something absolutely terrible like the Marvels or Echo, because once again it's not diversity that makes or breaks the story, it's the story itself. And so if Marvel genuinely wanted to represent women and different cultural backgrounds in a good way, they would have made sure that the movies were excellent. But what I think I've realized through the last few years of terrible diverse projects is that they may have tried to use the diversity angle so they could be lazy with quality but still try and attract an audience. And even though there were a couple projects that were diverse yet still good, like Shang-Chi, which definitely had some flaws, but was still a pretty solid intro for the hero, but most of the diverse projects they made were things like Eternals, She-Hulk, Echo, and the Marvels, which were all just so ridiculously terrible. Movie star. Well, I am, but I am also an Eternal. <laughs> Comedy. And it was those projects that really went to show that there was hardly any quality behind these stories. It didn't feel like there was any real effort put into trying to craft a good story. It was all just about the simple fact that it was diverse, and apparently that was the only reason we should like the stories. And the negative impacts of this go way beyond just terrible movies, but it also hurts people's careers. Because Disney went and hired Chloe 
Zoe Zhao, who was a great indie director but had no blockbuster experience, and Marvel completely threw her under the bus, all in the name of diversity. And while yes, she didn't have to accept the movie, given that she had no experience dealing with that kind of source material or blockbusters of that scale, I'm sure the paycheck was so good you would have had to have been an idiot to turn it down, except it has come back to bite her because a movie like The Eternals being so bad is definitely going to hinder her career moving forward, especially in the blockbuster space. Yes, she can continue to make great indie movies, but if she ever wants to step up to that blockbuster level and start earning some really good money, she's most likely going to struggle to get that opportunity just given the fact that The Eternals was such a massive disaster. And the same thing happened with She-Hulk actress Tatiana Maslany, who had delivered great performances in other shows and films, and then she came in to play a relatively well-liked hero in the Marvel comics, except Marvel Studios completely destroyed that character in the show, and also as a byproduct of that, have actually destroyed her career as well, basically doing the same thing to Tatiana Maslany as Disney did to Daisy Ridley, where the actress has talent, but flops on such a big scale that it's hard to shake, and I'm sure other studios would be nervous to work with her, just given how many Marvel fans are out there, and how many Marvel fans hated that show. And so it really proves to be the worst strategy possible for Disney Marvel to try and use diversity as a marketing scheme, because at the end of the day, it doesn't even result in the shows or movies getting good reviews, or making money at the box office. As obviously Captain Marvel 1 made a billion dollars, but that was at a time where every Marvel movie was making money, and Marvel hadn't really developed a bad reputation yet, except now people can see through the bluff, they can see that Marvel weren't putting good stories in these movies, because they thought that diversity was enough, and now they're not supporting the films, and that's why the Captain Marvel sequel, The Marvels, completely flopped at the box office, so much so that it was the worst MCU box office performance of all time, all because people now understand the grift. People now understand that just because it's diverse doesn't mean it's going to be good, and the same goes the other way. Even when something isn't diverse, is about a straight, white, male hero, it can still also suck, and that's what we've seen with Thor Love and Thunder and Ant-Man 3, where there was once again a terrible story, terrible execution of the film, and that's why those movies also got completely roasted on the internet, because like I said, nothing to do with diversity, these are just terrible movies. And so to end the video, I thought I'd offer a solution and strategy to try and fix this problem, because while anyone can just whine on the internet, I do want to offer some constructive feedback to try and save an industry that we all love so much, and the crazy thing is, is that I think you could actually fix this problem in three simple steps. With the first one being to make sure that there's actually a story to tell. Because you have to ask yourself before you create a movie around a diverse character, is there genuinely a good story to tell here? And there are a few characters that do have a good story to tell, like Shang-Chi, Gamora, and Yelena. Those are people that you can work with, those are people that you could end up telling a good story and help benefit the MCU. So why not just focus on those three that have a good story to tell, and cut characters like Echo and the Eternals, where there was never a really good story to tell, and the only reason they were even going with those heroes was to try and expand their universe and try and bring in more diversity, and it utterly backfired. And that's not saying that those characters in The Eternals or Echo herself can't work in the future, but until you've actually worked out what you want to say with that character, don't bring them into the MCU. Shang-Chi clearly has a roadmap for the future. Clearly they knew what they wanted to say with that character. Same goes for Yelena, and same has gone for Gamora since she entered the MCU. And this is meant to be a simple strategy that works for any 
any hero that you're bringing into the franchise, for Spider-Man, for Doctor Strange, for Iron Man, these heroes succeeded because there was a story to tell, so make sure you do that for the diverse characters too. And then to the second step, don't bite off more than you can chew. I think what serves the MCU well is when they keep the storyline tight, compact, and most importantly, concise. So have a cast that people actually like, work together well, and will continue to drive the story of the MCU forward without taking it in too many different directions. And the crazy thing about that cast is you could have a diverse one that works for the story and fans care about. And that cast would include people like Spider-Man, Yelena, Doctor Strange, Thor, Nick Fury, Gamora, Shang-Chi, and Miss Marvel. Yes, there are other heroes that will also work within this story, but those heroes are just an example of how you can pick and choose the right ones which bring diversity to the franchise, yet still allow it to be loved by millions and still tells a good story. And then the third and final step would be to make sure that there's a higher frequency of Avengers movies. Because I think they've gone too long since Avengers Endgame, which I understand that was the end of the road for that storyline, but you need to keep the Avengers that are left coming back together every couple of years because it just allows the story to be more streamlined and it also tells the audience what heroes they should be focused on and what the story is working towards. Because they should have added more Avengers out of the good characters that they introduced to the MCU and all also allowed Spider-Man to take the mantle as the leader of the Avengers, and if it wasn't him, then it should have gone to someone like Doctor Strange as well, and it would have just kept it more streamlined, kept the MCU moving in a good direction, and made sure that they didn't go in too many different directions with too many different characters that have ultimately backfired and completely destroyed Marvel's reputation because no one knows where the story's going or who they should be focused on. Because I think with those three simple steps, you could save this franchise, make sure that people are enjoying the storyline, and still have diversity. Because I can't stress it enough, diversity doesn't ruin or make a movie. All diversity is, is just simply being diverse. So why don't you just bring the focus back to telling good stories. But what are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below in the comments. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you all on my next video.